Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Dan Vividelli and I lead the measurement team here at InfoTrust. The measurement team is comprised of experts in data collection, engineering, dashboarding, and analysis. Today, Vika, who is on my team, will be presenting on a new Google Analytics feature for enhanced conversions and key considerations before enabling it. Vika has deep expertise in Google Analytics and specializes in app measurement. She also speaks four languages, loves to travel, and recently visited India. I hope you had a good trip, India. Uh, Vika. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing today? In today's session, we'll be covering enhanced conversions in J4 and how the new feature works. We'll also talk about key considerations before turning on the feature and how to collect user-provided data in a privacy-centric way. But before that, let's talk a little bit about InfoTrust. InfoTrust is a privacy-centric digital analytics solutions company that empowers marketers to make confident, data-driven decisions. We work with many of the world's best-known brands, and InfoTrust partners with enterprise organizations in the CPG, retail, media, health, and finance spaces. We are certified GMP and Google Cloud sales partners, with offices spread across three continents to best serve our global partners. The growing team at InfoTrust is committed to building a best-in-class workplace and impacting communities around the world, all while accelerating the transition to a privacy-centric marketing world. And with that, I'll turn it over to Vika to take us away. Thank you for the intro and thanks everyone who joined in our webinar today. Without it, you, let's get started. So um, as you may know, uh, loan uh, portal deprecation of certified uh, cookies uh, in Chrome has begun. And recently, the Chrome team has announced that the third-party cookies uh, phase-out is pushed to early next year, which leaves out with some time for a new solution, uh, new solution adoption that are present right now. Uh, with third-party cookies uh, going away uh, soon, uh, many industries right now are pushing towards activating the first-party data as a solution to navigate there through the future data gap. And our goal is to review the new feature that is thought to be one of such solutions from a Google side, Google side of thing. But before we delve in, let's review what the first-party data really is. Uh, think of first-party data as your most valuable data set. This is information that is corrected by your business, owned by your business, which is picked up through direct interactions with your customers and users. Being that first-party data is as close to the source as you can get, it is also going to often be the most durable, trustworthy, privacy-centric data that you as an as organization uh, have uh, about your current prospect customers. First party data can be uh, collected uh, via any of the following sources like a CRM, app sites, call centers, transaction database, and email responses. And some of the examples of first party data um, might include their account information like your name, email, address, purchase history like items that has been ordered, uh, have been ordered, payment preferences like subscriptions owned, and digital analytics data such as the one that you're collecting in your Google Analytics, like common activities completed on a site on an app, device types, or content viewed. So in any evolving uh, privacy and technology landscape, Google Analytics 4 continuously introduces more durable solutions that you can uh, help you to uh, continuously unlock accurate measurement after Google Chrome deprecates third-party cookies. And enhanced conversions um, in Google J4 is a feature that is set to improve the accuracy of the conversion measurement. And you probably may hear Google and other um, people speak about enhanced conversions more these days. And our goal is to walk you through it, get you as well informed as possible about the enhanced conversions so you can make that informed decision where whether to go with it or not. So let's delve into the enhanced conversion first. Um, what is our enhanced conversion? So enhanced conversions overall as a concept uh, existed for quite some time for Google Ads, but it's relatively new. Um, a feature in Google Analytics 4. With enhanced conversions, you can collect a consented first party data from the site, such as name, phone, address, or user email, and transmit it to Google in encrypted form. Google currently utilizing uh, uh, the algorithm SHA-256 to hash those uh, the data uh, securely. And then uh, 
eventually when this data is sent to Google, again, in a very hashed way, Google is able to match this data with a customer's, uh, with a customer's Google account that Google has at, the, at their end. Um, and this kind of enables the cross-device journey for the conversion. Enhanced conversions sought to be very beneficial for the following instances. The first thing, it helps you to get more accurate cross-device conversion tracking, specifically for Google Ads slice of your cross-channel conversion attribution. It also get, helps you to get more detailed um, demographics data through the Google Signals Data Association. It keeps you prepared to the future for party audience integration, as well as prepare your analytics conversion measurement for the third party cookie deprecation. Uh, now let's delve into how enhanced conversions are supposed to work and how they are working actually. In the nutshell, uh, when the customers engage with a site, with your website and converts, data, data usually, uh, the, the, your personal data such as email address, name, home address, or the phone number uh, may be recorded uh, in the website conversion tra uh, tracking tags. For example, we have, let's say, a sign-in user uh, that, that is signing in a Google account that sees your ad in your YouTube, in your YouTube, and then converts on your site, sharing their personal information with you. Before sending this user-provided data to Google, it should be hashed using the secure one-way algorithm. As I, we mentioned before, Google use SHA two five six algorithm for that, which which ensure that the data is private, privately and secured while being transmitted. Uh, then once the hash data is sent to Google, it is matched with signing Google accounts to attribute the conversion to the ads, such as clicks or views. So this process overall ensures that advertisers can accurately track conversions while maintaining the user privacy. Now let's dive into a real uh, life example to see how this actually works in real time and not in the, in the theory. Um, let's say we have Melanie. So Melanie is right now on uh, on her lunch break, searching for her from her Google Work account for a phone that she could give uh, to Alex as a gift. She sees your ad on the search result page, clicks on it, and, get, and then goes to your site. The enhanced conversion tracking tag hashes uh, Melanie's work email uh, and sends it to Google. On the website, then uh, Melanie studies your phone, but then her break ends and she needs to go back to work. Let's assume after work, Melanie returns to the site from her smartphone and makes a purchase, indicating her personal email address, her phone number, and delivery address. This data is hashed and transmitted to Google again. And since Melanie uh, always been using two-factor authentication, Google can uh, use her phone number to link her work and email, uh, personal emails right now. And this allows Google to understand that the same person, uh, the same user that clicked on the ad earlier the day and the same is the same user as made the purchase later the day. If it went in for enhanced conversion and this user provided data, the system might not, uh, might not be able to link these actions uh, and would not see these two users to, as one user. Um, so this is kind of a real-time example how the enhanced conversions user-provided data work in general. Now let's speak about the privacy and how it these uh, enhanced conversions are a GDPR CCPA compliant. Um, because as we know, many of you might be concerned if this, this feature is a compliant. Um, so in overall, enhanced conversions are considered privacy safe as user provided data is sent to Google and later matched with signing Google accounts is hashed as we mentioned uh, before. Um, and over and enhanced conversions are technical response to their data privacy laws like GDPR, CCPA, uh, which usually demand more control and transparency over personal data, how it's collected, how, how it's going to be used, which also means that any personal data, like user-provided data, that you are sending to Google, whether it's hashed, it should be not only hashed, but also should be a consented data, right? Um, enhanced conversions uh, at the top of that also provide a solution that respects privacy enhancement for a, a key browser, such as Safari ITP or Firefox uh, ETP. However, enhanced conversions are not supported for health and fitness industries as well as for the apps. 
So this is something that you need to keep in mind. Um, as you may have guessed, um, to ensure that enhanced conversions work properly, we would need to send to Google a consented personal data called user-provided data. So let's review in details what it is. In a nutshell, um, user-provided data uh, collection allows you for allows you to future-proof your setup so that it's not dependent on third-party cookies, which are going to be deprecated very soon. User-provided data allows uh, for the collection of the emails, phone number, address, and then later it associates those with a unique user identifier called user ID. Again, you can only send a consented first-party data to Google. So this is where your Google uh, mode, uh, uh, consent, uh, pl uh, consent mode platforms and Google consent mode implementation come into the play as well, which probably you've already been doing and working with them. In G4, user-provided data is applicable in two main scenarios. The first one is used for, for enhanced conversions, and we covered enhanced conversions a little bit. The second use, uh, use case scenario is uh, when it, it technically it enables a cookie list demographics and interest data, which will be really invitable shift with a third-party cookie deprecation in case you, you still want to use those reports. So... Definitely, um, you can consider using these features, uh, like uh, the, like providing the user pro user provided data in Google, if you either consider to enhance your conversions and or improve your um, demographic data reports in G four. Um, so it was a theoretical material about the feature. Uh, that would help you to understand how enhanced conversions user-provided data are designed. Now, if you have enhanced conversions or user-provided data available with your Google Ads uh, and you consider enabling it for G4, we would recommend holding it back, back a bit and consider some of the irreversible changes that it will have. Um, so just a quick remark here, you might hear Google speaking about um, UPD enhanced conversions for G4 and recommending you to enable it. But as your trusted advisor, we want you to be well informed about this feature so you are aware of what exactly it would mean for your data when you're enabling it, and hence the following. Firstly, uh, once, um, firstly, enhanced conversions and user-provided data in G4 are permanent change. They, uh, so this is something that you need to keep in mind. There is no way how you can toggle it off. Um, also, uh, user-provided data and enhanced conversions are not supported for the app streams. So if you have a G4 property with the, web, with the app streams, it might not be working well with the app streams. And also it's not supporting the health and uh, health and fitness industries. Um, additionally, if you enable user-provided data collection for enhanced conversions, uh, you will not see the uh, positive improvement of your enhanced conversions right away. And sometimes you will have to wait up to one month for those conversions improvements um, in the in your G4 data. Secondly, if you prefer if your if your property has audiences with conditions that involve user interaction across multiple devices, audience membership size will decrease due to si signing user data. Thirdly, um, user ID will disappear from your Google BigQuery export with this activation. Also, Google said that it's going to be supported later. However, not, however, it's not the case as of now. So please be uh, very mindful about this, um, I would say, restriction that happens after the after the user-provided user, user data activation. Um, and, and fourthly, demographics and interest data in G4 will transition to using user-provided data for signing users rather than from cookies and device identifiers, which means you may see no data in your G4 demographic reports if you do not set this information based on your first-party cookie data to Google. And this is something that Google, like all these points are something that Google already has, um, already documented officially, but there are some more findings that we wanted to share with you because informed means armed. So, additionally to what we have, uh, what we have noted with the UPD activation, user-provided data activation, is that it takes around 
10 to 12 days for Google to correctly process conversion data that involves UPD in G4 UI. And if you're using, for example, exploration reports or API, the conversions are present there, there but might disappear as soon as you try to associate them with different dimensions, both custom and native dimensions, which is which was very a painful learning experience for some of the clients when they can, could not report on their campaign performance um, for the first initial 10 to 12 days of their processing. Uh, what worked for us was uh, is toggling off the user provided data collection in our Google Analytics uh, property. If you want to do so as well, uh, you can go to the admin in G4, data settings, and then look for a data collection and turn off the ingestion and processing of user provided data in your property. This kind of will help you to come back to the, to the previous view of your data um, with that type of deactivation. Alternatively, if you are unable to modify the data being sent to Google Analytics, but you still want to stop using the feature in your reporting, you can also disable blended reporting identity in your reporting identity settings, and therefore use only data from anonymous identity space. In reporting identity settings, it's called device-based reporting identities. So if, like, if you see some inconsistencies in the in data due to the processing time, you can definitely uh, switch over to the device based uh, reporting identity. The other thing that we also see um, in with their UPD activation that uh, the session source and medium uh, start being misattributing uh, a lot to the direct none. Some um, sometimes we notice that the increase in direct non-traffic was going up to 70% from 20% prior to the user provided data enablement. Uh, and unfortunately, there is no actual fixes right now for this issue. However, again, switching over to enormous uh, identity space, which is device uh, based reporting identity might help you to decrease or direct non-misattribution. Um, so this kind of summarizes the information that we wanted to share about um, enhanced conversions with both what was known about the feature and the impact on G4 data that we uh, noticed post activation. But overall, just wanted to summarize what exactly we covered in the presentation. So we covered the, um, the impending deprecation of third party cookies in Chrome. Um, and, is, and that how the interests are pivoting towards the first party data solutions. We also explored how Google G4 introduced enhanced conversions to, um, to enhance your conversion measurements while also safeguarding your user privacy. Uh, we also illustrated with a real life scenario how enhanced conversions work. Additionally, we discussed uh, their privacy implications and compliance consideration on enhanced conversions and user provided data, along with the practical advice and potential challenges associated with its activation in GF4. Uh, again, I just wanted to emphasize that provided the, the issue that we are currently facing and noticing with the user provided uh, co uh, data collection, we do not recommend en enabling it GF4 just yet. However, if you, you can continue using enhanced conversions with your Google Ads, if you did in the past. And additionally, if you already have activated that feature, you can definitely go through the recommendation and suggestions on, um, on how to fix some of their inconsistencies in data that we, uh, we, we've noticed. Hope that was very helpful. Um, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Vika, for presenting. Really helpful information for today. It seems like we'll have plenty to talk about as uh, things progress. Um, so look for future sessions, but appreciate the time.